Okay, let's say we want to add some effects to uh, one of the monitor sends. In this case, Jesse would like to have reverb and a little bit of the delay in his monitor. So we're going to go and select his monitor send, which is monitor one. We select that here. Then over here, we go over to the effects returns, which is on page three, and it shows me that if I hit sends on fader, it's going to show me that I've got the reverb, since it's stereo, they're both coming up together, and the delay, both going into his monitor right now. All right, so we've got that set up to return into his monitor. If I go over here, you'll see there's nothing in the other one. So for right now, Jesse has reverb and delay, just like I have on the console, and you can set the level right here of how much reverb and delay he gets in his monitor. Mm -hmm. So there you go, sends on fader, you select the monitor, that you want to look at and then you have to have this over here on effects returns and you raise up the level of the return that you want to show up on there. You showed us the house scene that's our uh, scene we shouldn't be editing. How do we save a scene when we walk in that's our own personal scene to use on a weekend we mix? Okay, let's go over that. So we're going to go over here on the corner of each one of these sections if you want the display to to show you the specifics of a particular section, you hit this view button. So if I want to look at the aux sense, the EQ, any of these, if I hit that, it'll go into a highlighted view of that. So I'm going to go over here to the scenes. So I hit view on the scenes. I'm going to select a scene. So let's go to scene 11. Okay. And I'm going to say then, I want to save the settings to scene 11 since I've selected that. Never write over scene one, okay? That's the one we have as our default safety valve. But you have plenty of scenes to choose from and I would suggest that everybody gets a section of scenes that they can use for their reserve. So we're gonna uh, use this one for Autumn's first scene. So we've, I've dialed down to scene 11. I'm gonna say save settings to scene 11. I'm gonna say uh, here, instead of saying CBLH default, we're going to go in here and backspace back and then we'll use the character set here. I just select the character set and we're going to say autumn. Okay. And you can do this. It's not the most friendly, but at least it gives you a way to do it with A U T U M N. U -M -N. So you're seeing it in real time. And, and then I'm going to stick the letter 1 after it because this will be her first scene. There we go. So, so it says that. And all I have to do now is say save. You know, I just push the button. Boom. There she is. Now we could recall that scene. I should have changed some fader settings. I could have done that. Well, we can save it again. Let's do this so that you can actually see it happen. I'm going to pull all the vocal mics out. We'll save her scene away. It's already there. So we'll just say save. Oh. So we're going to save it. Let's save it. I'm going to overwrite. See, since I already had something there, it warns me. So I'm going to say yes, overwrite the scene. Okay, now let's recall. I'll just go up here to recall this scene right here. So we're going to say uh, go. And it's going to say, hey, do you really want to load that scene? And I'm going to say yes. There, and it just loaded that scene. You saw the faders go. We'll go back to autumn scene. I'll say recall that, go, yes, yes, there it is. There's autumn scene. So it's that easy to do it. It's a total recall of every single element of the board when you do that. So you can have a totally different patch setting set up for that, okay? And it'll instantly recall it and go. That's it. Well, how do I adjust the EQ on a channel? Okay. Kading. Here we go. Let's go over to, again, we'll use um, one of the vocal mics here as an example. Uh, if your screen, like, see, we're in the save settings mode here. I have that view button. I can either take it off by taking that off, or I can just hit home. Home will always get you back to the top screen here if you were diving into whatever screen you're diving into, you can always hit home to go back, and it's also a toggle right here. Okay, here we are inside the EQ settings. You have four bands of EQ, high, mid-high, mid-low, and low. 
and then you even have a lot of parameters in there. They have good defaults set up in here as far as the way the, the each band works. In each band you have the gain and the frequency just like you would normally see so you can sweep the frequencies and then set the gain plus or minus you know boosting or cutting. You also on the mid bands have what we call Q which tells you how wide or how narrow of a band that, uh, that you're going to be affecting. Now the display if I have this in here gives me great detail on how I'm doing it so let's go um, we're in the mid-high band now. First thing you gotta do is enable it. You hit EQ on, because right now it's off for the channel. So I can make changes here. You'll see it's in gray, because it's not active on the channel until I turn it on, and then you see the color changes so that you can see that it's active. So you can defeat it or make it active. But you can see how then I'm adjusting the gain control right now on one of the mid-range channels. Okay, and it, so it gives you a frequency from low to high, so you can see when you're sweeping what you're doing, your, your plus and minus on your boost, cut, and then also this is how narrow or wide. If there's one little weird thing that I'm trying to EQ, I usually will peek it out a little bit like this and sweep around until I hear that nastiness. Like in a vocal, it might be this kind of nasally sound. That's usually what I'm trying to get rid of. That's going to be, for a male, it's going to be around five or 600. For a female, around 900 to 1K. Okay, that's what you would do. You find it, and then you just dip it down a little bit. You'll find that it takes a little bit more boosting to find it and sweep around. But then once you find it and you get nailed in on it, just do a little cut there, and that'll go a long ways. All right? I use high-pass filters extensively, especially on vocals. Here's where the, or they call it low cut, high-pass or low cut. And then I will dial that frequency in somewhere around 100 hertz, usually as a default. That'll keep the P's from popping, especially with the way the system's set up here. Because whenever they do a P into a microphone really close like that, it's going to want to come out through the subs. And so if we do high passing on, on the vocal mics like that, it cleans all that up and you don't get all that horrendous boom, boom that you would have. And it doesn't affect the sound of the vocal because it's, it's just getting rid of the sub. Uh, the subtones, the harmonics down low. Okay, so on all my vocal mics, you're going to see I'm going to set up that high pass. I already did Jesse, so we're kind of set up there. But I would do that on the other ones too when we get uh, to sound check time here. Okay, so that kind of that's how the high pass works. Uh, the high frequency is is set up by default as a shelf, and you'll see it graphically again. It'll show you where we're boosting. Your frequency just sets the corner frequency where you start boosting from that point or cutting. All right, the only, I, I try not to do too much with that unless you really need to. I did do a little bit on the bass because and it's just way up high above where there's anything. It's from, like from 4K on out just to get some of the noise out of that and some of that kind of clicking stuff that you don't want to have. So you've got um, EQ section, your low cut filter very effective for doing that don't overuse either one of them but uh, use it to actually clean up the signal and get rid of some of the unwanted sounds don't try to make it sound better just try to get rid of the unwanted sounds because in live mixing it's better to cut out what's bad than to try and boost what uh, what you like about something instead just cut out what's bad and raise the overall level it'll sound a lot smoother this console has a gate. Can you explain how to use a gate and what its purpose is? Yeah. Uh, currently, we aren't using the gates on anything, but it would be something that I would use most likely on, like, the tom mics or the snare mics on the drums. And what that would do then is make it so that when he's hitting the other drums, for instance, sometimes the snare is like the rattle, okay? And so when he hits the tom, you'll hear the <laughs> every time. So if I use a gate on the snare, then I can help uh, minimize how much of that I'm getting when he's doing the other things. Also, the tom mics uh, a lot of times uh, will, will pick up cymbals that are really close to him. Like a lot of times the ride cymbals right next to the floor tom mic. And so he'll be, you know, crashing on his ride cymbal and I, I'll be getting it through the floor tom mic and it makes it kind of harsh. So I can use gates then to kind of help minimize when those mics aren't actively used for what they're supposed to be, like hitting in the tom, that I don't get other 
other sounds into them that are gonna just totally mess up my mix. Okay, so let's go to the tom, for instance. So we go over here to the tom. If I go take and take a view of this, and I activate the, uh, the gate, there's a few parameters that you can set up. Most of the time, you're gonna leave the attack at one or zero, which is the very fastest it can go. That means I want that mic, the, think of a gate as an automatic volume control. So what it's gonna do is when it senses the signal coming into it, it's gonna instantly raise the volume of that up. And then after that signal gets below a threshold, it's gonna mute that channel. The cool thing about the gates that are in the X32 is I can actually set how much of a range um, I want to uh, I want to duck it by or, or uh, mute it by. So here's here's the threshold. So if I show you right here, I'm saying that any signal that is below this point right here, and what it is is when when the signal is actually going into it you can actually see where the signal is on this graph. As it gets louder, it moves more to the right. So I can see like when he's hitting his right, I want it to be down here below that, but when he hits his tom, I want it to be above that threshold, and then that'll open the mic up for me. The beauty is I can also set uh, the range, which tells me how much I'm gonna lower the volume on the mic when it's below the threshold. And I typically like to do that around 10 or 12 dB on drums. That means it doesn't totally take, it's like just lowering this fader from here to here instead of taking it all the way out. So it doesn't sound so unnatural when the gate is in. So it's just lowering the level of what's going into the drum instead of just taking it all the way out. If I have this range set all the way to infinity, it's like I'm going like this when he hits it and then like that when he doesn't hit it. Hit it like that. That kind of can sound unnatural because you hear go ah, ah, like that kind of a thing. So I typically just lower the, the level down 10 or 12 dB on drums so that I don't uh, totally shut it off and all of a sudden have the ambience and everything change too dramatically. But it really helps improve like when you got a crash cymbal bleeding into your tom mic. So I can keep my toms nice and attack and sound really good when he's playing, but when he goes to hit that crash, I'm not going to get as much of it. Okay, same thing for the snare. Now what about the compressor on vocals? How would be a basic setting for a vocal compressor? Ah, good, good question. Alrighty, don't overuse compression. It's live mix. We want to have dynamics. Dynamics are what make things alive. You can make your mix safe and not move and be very homogenized sounding, but you want to have dynamics, especially in a live mix. So let's go over to take a look at, uh, at Jesse's vocal, because I kind of already set up some dynamics on, on him here. This is the curve of the compressor that I'm using. I'm using a very low ratio, three to one ratio, okay? And then the key thing to remember on here is on the attack, you have two settings. You have a peak attack or an RMS attack. RMS is a short for root mean squared, but it, it takes an average, basically, of what that level is. Instead of peak, takes that instantaneous level and clamps it down. So if we were to use that peak type of compressor, when he said, hello, it would go, hello, like that. It would just drop down really quick and hard. We don't want that. So I use RMS almost every time. on a, If I'm using it on a bass, if I'm using it on a vocal, it's going to be RMS to slow that response down so it doesn't clamp down so hard when it does hit the threshold. So it'll go, hello, it'll be a lot smoother, more natural sounding. So use the RMS setting, keep the ratio down low, and then you can watch when... Uh, can you speak into that real quick? Can you run up there and just speak into it? And then we can actually show you then how this actually responds. Okay, I'm gonna. Well, you're, well, Jesse's walking up there. How would I solo his mic to know which? And listen to it into the cans. Oh, okay, headphones. here's the solo bus right here. You can just add all these solos together. You can have one only soloed or a whole group to solo, and that would show up in the cans level. The overall level of your phones is right here. Okay, just to set the level, and, the, and you can get your cans plugged in on each side right in these insets here. What's the purpose of listening to a channel in your cans? 
Well, for me, I I rarely do it in a live mix except for if I'm trying to find a buzz. Say say I got a buzz in the system and I can't. I'll just go through like this and just keep going until I find it. And then I know where it is and then I can mute that channel just by itself and it's like when somebody's speaking or something in between. So it can come in handy for that. I can actually solo my vocal mix right here. So I do that and I'm hearing the blend and then I can go in on my faders here and actually tweak my my blend if I have harmonies here like, oh I got too much alto or I don't have enough of the soprano part I can go in there listen to that soloed on this bus only hear just the vocals together and get a blend the key thing is if I listen to it here I'm listening to actually where these fader positions are because that's the the result of what my mix position is here okay that would be some of the key ways I would use solo all right Jesse's here we go Jesse's gonna come up on his and are you there? Is that mic working? It's probably not, huh? Of course. Is it dead? Yeah. It's dead, Jim. Of course. How about your acoustic guitar? Jim. Oh, there we go. We got it. Okay. So go ahead and, and speak into it. You can say, say, say something pretty loud. Check speaking. I am speaking. Well, Check. Yeah. Try a little louder. Check. There we go. Okay. Here's that threshold I was talking about right here. So if he yells, say, say a really loud check. Check. Okay. You can see how much I was attenuating right here. And if I move, if I move my threshold, I'm going to move my threshold lower. Okay. Go ahead and say that again. Check. See how much it dropped it down. It really dropped it down a whole lot. And you can see it took a lot for me to catch his vocal. So I don't want to take out don't want to lose his natural dynamics of what he's doing singing wise because that expression is important but i just want to make sure that if all of a sudden something hits a little louder than it should that i'm going to catch it and that's kind of what i have set up here all right so don't overuse compression but it can be great to kind of help smooth out a couple of things especially you know uh one of these over the top things but just don't overuse compression please Otherwise, your mix will just sound very dull. Okay. Is Anything else? Is there a meters page where we can see all the inputs yes. and outputs? Okay, over here on the top, you can you go to the home is, is probably the most common thing. That gives you an overview of whatever channel you're looking at, everything. It has the input, the gate, the EQ, any compression that we have, and what it's being sent out on. That's just an overview here. This channel right here, this gives me an overview of everything that's going on in the console right now. So I can see I've got a buzz on this bass channel here. Um, that is somewhere, you can see it's down low there. That's the only thing that's happening right now because there's nothing plugged into it and it's just kind of got an open cord on it right now. But I can see the overview of all the levels for every single one of my input channels. Um, I can look at by paging over my mix buses, all of everything that's there, my aux sends, and there's an overview of everything. All the inputs and the outputs in the whole the whole board right now. You so that's us, the metering. You showed us some setup mute groups. How do I adjust those mute groups if I needed to add a channel or okay. take a channel out? So you go over to the mute groups. So I highlight the mute groups. If I select then when I'm in mute group mode, if I hit the button, it shows me on these buttons everything that's in my mute group. While I'm holding that button down, if I want to take something out of that group, I just do that and I release it. And then now that is what's in the group. Okay, that one's the hot channel that's selected right now. So that's why it goes to that. Okay, let's go over here. I'll select that as my hot channel. There we go. So, yeah, so I took those four out. As long as you have that mute group thing active, it's gonna be working like that. You hold it down, you add it in, okay? So it's really easy to create and subtract out of a mute group. See, that's selecting it, so it doesn't do anything. But if I have this held in here, okay, the key thing to remember is get out of this mode after here, because that's only for setting up mute groups. Now the mute group will be active, see, after I get out of that mode. So this is just to set it up, you hit mute group, you can select what you want in there. I could add these probably to it. Can I do it? Nope. Only the inputs. And what about the subgroups? Is it pretty much the same way or is it a little different? 
Um, it is the same way. It's exactly the same way. So um, here, like for my monitors, right? I set up, um, which one was it? There it is right there, two. So same thing, if I wanted to add, do that, take away, do that. Get out of mute groups, then you'll see it actually activate or deactivate it. So mute group to select the group that you want to add or subtract to. Add them, release, get out of mute group, and then it's active. Simple as that. Let's if you it. use a group and you want to, you can totally manually override it. But the next time you hit it, it'll actually go back in again. So you can manually override anything that you have set up in your mute groups just for a one time. The next time you hit it, it's there. What's this flashing orange button on the bottom right hand side? <laughs> That's, uh, that uh, affects the, in this case, the delay time I have set up on my delay unit, okay? In here, let's go, I'm gonna go into the effects. You normally won't have to go in here, but if you wanna change a parameter in your effects, you can say effects, and then it'll show up. Uh, the delay unit is effects number three. I have a reverb unit in effects number two. So in this case, that flashing light represents the delay time that's set up in here. Right now I have it set at 419. If the song, the worship song, is faster, you know, I can just tap tempo yeah, to this, like okay? So I can tap tempo here, and it'll take whatever I'm tapping to, and then change the, the, the delay time to be exactly what I'm tapping. So I just went really fast, so I changed it to 164. If I go back down to this, you know, I went to 449. I think you can go up to about one second. Yeah, even a little bit more than one second. But that would be hello, hello, hello. So typically, you know, you just tap to the tempo and uh, that'll set up your delays to be in sync with that tempo. I don't use that, that whole, a whole lot. Um, I believe this knob, yeah, this knob is active for that too. So I can do it either this way. I just kind of set it up around, around 400 or so as a default. But then you can always dial it in exactly how you want it to be. I know we've got the basic AVOM set up right now for us, but if we want to add a Tom's channel to us later, how would we patch the AVOM differently? Okay. That is done as a direct out. Here we go. If I go to routing, I have access to all of the outputs on the back of the console. There's 16 outputs back here. Right now we have one through 14 routed down to this Avion unit, just a one for one. Channel one goes to channel one on the Avion. But inside the console, I can select any channel in any order to go to any output. So in this case right now, we're taking channel one on the Avion is set up for Jesse's vocal mic. Jesse's vocal mic comes in on channel 13. So I'm gonna go over here and I'll look at output number one to the Aviom is actually coming as a direct out of, let's see what channel it's set to. It'll highlight, there it is, channel 13. So I've taken and remapped 13 in software to show up on channel one down here. And it's all done that way on a per channel basis. You can set up, so I'm setting up direct out of channel 13. I can tell it to go pre-EQ, post-EQ, pre-fade, or post-fade. And I'm going pre-EQ, so he's getting the signal that is before my fader and before my EQ here so that he can have no change ever happen in his monitor. I can change the house mix of his vocal, but his monitor vocal will always be at the same level. All right, okay. I think we've got a great overview of the Bearing Direct. Thanks a lot. And there's great stuff online too. You can go to YouTube. There's a whole bunch of tutorials for the X32. It has some great capabilities, and we hope you really enjoy having this console here at the church. Thanks.